Mr. Chair, I yield myself such time as I may consume. So ordered. Forty years ago, my father started a small business in our backyard. Growing up in Gaston, North Carolina, being the youngest of five kids, my father started a small business with his friend who also had five kids. And it uh, didn't change the world. Uh, and it was just a lawn mowing business. Uh, we mowed other people's grass, and that's what put uh, two families through school, provided for two families, and eventually provided for many others as they scaled up and grew uh, the business. And while my dad's small business didn't change the world, it certainly changed my world and our family's world. Uh, like other entrepreneurs, though, my dad needed access to affordable capital to scale his business. And when other sources of opportunities for a little lending or capital dried up, he relied on a charge card, which we now call uh, a credit card, to grow his business and, um, and to start employing other folks. And this story isn't unique to my family. Uh, we see this playing out across the country today. Entrepreneurs with new ideas or who are seeking to grow their businesses are struggling to access affordable credit and affordable capital. That means that they're not given the same opportunity to change their lives, their families' lives, or, uh, or their community. This is a loss for all of us, a loss for American innovation. That's where investment capital and this bill come in to help more entrepreneurs realize their version of the American dream. Currently, the venture capital that, uh, funds, that, uh, that funds startups are concentrated in traditional financial hubs like Silicon Valley, Boston, New York City. Those three cities uh, and those three areas of the country account for almost three quarters of all venture funding. Now that's not for every business, but it's a very specific group of startups. This Congress and our uh, committee heard compelling testimony from folks across the ideological spectrum who urged us to make it easier for them to raise money from non-traditional sources. This would allow them not only to build their funds and deploy more capital, but also share their financial success within their community. This bill, the Expanding Access to Capital Act, does just that and more by alleviating the unique fundraising challenges faced by entrepreneurs and their investors who don't live in Silicon Valley. It's also, this bill will also make improvements to our public markets and create new opportunities for everyday investors to save and build wealth and to enjoy, enjoy their version of the American dream. This, cap, this form of capital formation is a critical ingredient for creating long-term economic growth that has proven enduring here in the United States. And not to mention, it's traditionally been an area where a divided Washington can find consensus. A little more than a decade ago, Congress came together to pass the JOBS Act, which President Obama then signed into law. It was a Republican House, a Democrat Senate, and a Democrat in the White House who put that historic piece of legislation through the process and into law. It addressed several hurdles hindering our capital markets by right-sizing onerous regulatory barriers and providing entrepreneurs access to new levels and streams of funding. Recognizing the need to build on the success of the JOBS Act, the House Financial Services Committee embarked on a years-long mission to better understand the remaining headwinds hindering capital formation and legislate real and impactful solutions. Many of those solutions are found in this legislation we're considering today, which, which consists of common sense, innovative ideas to accomplish three goals. First, the bill strengthens our public markets and aims to incentivize companies to go public, undoing the troubling decline of initial public offerings uh, here in the United States, or IPOs. That means the businesses that average everyday investors can own a piece of. Uh, and why is this important we attract more companies to the public markets in the United States? One, everyday investors, American investors, also known as retail investors, are limited to in investing in publicly traded companies. Most public companies here in the United States um, uh, uh, that are of large uh, and uh, large size and scale uh, should be available in the public markets. More public companies here in the United States means more opportunities for the American retail investor to grow their savings. Number two, job growth. A 2021 study found that biotech startups expand their workforce by on average 150% in the first three years after undertaking an initial public offering 
using the Jobs Act uh, provisions. To make our public markets more attractive, H.R. 2799, this bill includes provisions that right-size regulatory burdens on public companies, streamlining the process of going public and allowing more companies to qualify as an emerging growth company. This is an extension of marquee provisions within the Bipartisan Jobs Act that, are, that have a proven record of success. Second, as I said earlier, this legislation supports small businesses and entrepreneurs who are the true engine of our economy and account for 99.9% .9 of all U.S. businesses. Among other policies, this bill allows small businesses to raise more money through offerings. It also addresses limitations on small emerging venture fund managers attempting to raise and deploy capital to startups and entrepreneurs in their communities. Third, this bill increases access to private markets and allows more Americans to participate in high growth investment opportunities that have been traditionally reserved for the wealthy elite. Currently, these investment opportunities are reserved for those qualifying as quote unquote invest, uh, accredited investors, which dictates what a person can invest in based off their wealth or income. We should all agree that wealth and income should not be a proxy for sophistication, especially if investors have expertise or experience that prepares them to invest in private offerings. This bill includes provisions to expand the accredited investor definition, allowing everyday Americans to invest where they see opportunities and where they have expertise. That means new wealth building opportunities for American investors who have been arbitrary sidelined for too long. Now, these private markets, that's where we've had the fastest growing businesses. The greatest wealth creation is ownership in these private markets. We want to link that up for all Americans to have that opportunity to invest in those markets where they have expertise. So let me close with this. Capital formation should not be a partisan issue. This legislation builds on the success of the Bipartisan Jobs Act and will benefit Americans in every single one of our districts, either by growing their retirement savings or through job creation and economic growth in their community. This bill is a compilation of several standalone bills introduced by numerous members of the Financial Services Committee under the great leadership of our subcommittee chair on capital markets, Ann Wagner of Missouri. There are many, uh, many members that I wish to recognize, but they're too long at this time uh, to go through all of their great work. But it is embodied in this bill before us today. I'm grateful for the opportunity to be here on the House floor. And I'm glad, great, grateful to the leadership, House Republican leadership, that have uh, prioritized uh, this help for small businesses and our legislative work in the Financial uh, Services Committee. I think we can uh, see that we all want to be unified and helping the American people achieve their dreams and the way they see fit. And for small business folks, for folks, folks that want to start a small business, we need to make things easier for them, not harder. This bill makes it better for them and easier for them. So with that, uh, I'd like to reserve the balance of my time, and I'd like to ask unanimous consent that uh, Ann Wagner, Missouri, may lead the, the debate on this side. Without objection.